as a car guy, I can appreciate the subtle awesomeness that is the zip tie. And why wouldn't you want zip tie technology applied to something that you use every day, like a belt. I have been using these Anson belts for about a year now, and what is super cool about them is they have micro adjusters on them, like a zip tie, listen. And then there's a lever that you can adjust. Look, it's after the holidays. I know how it is, right? Everyone could use a quarter inch, maybe a half inch, right? And you don't wanna like have a belt that's like perfectly worn in on one hole and then have to like loosen it to the next hole. Then it's like, oh, you did bad this month. You can DL stealth adjust the Anson belt buckle. Furthermore, it is interchangeable. So I can take this buckle, put it on this strap. This buckle, put it on this strap. It's crazy! They're offering a special deal for smoking tire fans. You can get a combo, right? Three straps, two buckles, under $100. It's pretty gangster, right? Six different combos of belts. You can change them in like eight seconds. And you can make little adjustments if you have to. Hit the link in the description. Check it out. I'm sure you'll be about them. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Eagles Canyon Raceway, a road course outside of Dallas, Texas. Uh, and this is Sean and Sean and his buddies. Thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having us. Sean and uh, a group of his buddies have invited me down here to drive some oddball cars. Uh, and I am really excited because we have a cool assortment of vehicles. So, Sean, your Porsche 928 is not like other Porsche 928s. Tell me about this thing. Uh, it started out as a 1988 automatic 5.0 stock car. It's been my daily driver for 11 years now. This Is, is this your only vehicle? No, I've got other ones okay. in case I decide to do something with this. <laughs> okay, but so so 11 years of Porsche 928 as a daily driver. I've put about 75, 80,000 miles in the past wow. 11 years. Has it been a good daily driver? Oh yeah, it's only let me down once and the fuel pump went out three houses down from my house. Oh, all right. You just walk it off. No, we pushed it to the driveway <laughs> and changed it out. Um, so now this thing is supercharged. Tell me about this kit. It's got a VCB engineering road track supercharger on it. Interesting. Um, Never seen a supercharged 928 before, uh, ever. Really? No, have you? Oh yeah, and there's oh. lots of them out there. Oh really? Okay, well they're hiding somewhere. There's supercharged ones, there's turbo ones. We've got uh, some guys in Wisconsin that have a thousand horsepower turboed one. Call me if you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to him the other day and he said, yeah, you need to have him come out and talk to us. Wow, I think I do. Okay, so, uh, so how much power does it make now? This one's putting down 370 to the wheel. To the wheels? Mm -hmm. Wow, and, and how much torque, do you know? It was about the same. About the same? Yeah, it was pretty linear all the So way. that's a gain of what, 150? Uh, that's a good guess. Right? The and stock at the crank was 316. And now we're at 360 wheel. That's, awesome. yeah, big jump, big jump. All we're right. Only, we're only running five PSI at boost, too. That's it. Oh, wow. All right. So, so, very uh, mild. so now I'm going to kick you out of your own car, and I'm going to go run a few laps and see how it do. Go have some fun. Thanks. <laughs> Here we go. They gave us, Sean gave us a spec sheet, powder coated intake and cam covers, which look beautiful. Gates reinforced timing belt, pork and tensioning system for timing belt, uh, Rotrex supercharger kit, 367.74 horsepower at the wheel, tuned by ATS racing, uh, Coney triple adjustable shocks on stock springs, Louis Ott drop links on front and rear sway bars. Uh, there's an X-pipe with cats. Custom, oh, this car's had some hail damage. The paint is uh, not uh, what I would call uh, pretty, but uh, all right, here we go. So 367 wheel horsepower, and it's still an automatic, So, and it's an old school automatic, so that might make things kind of interesting. Uh, we're gonna run a couple of laps here and see how uh, things hold up. This track is uh, nice, fun, a little bumpy. And uh, I have zero, zero seat time so far before doing this. Uh, I know where the track goes, but I'm just trying to get a feel for it. Okay, I really like this uh, 928 sports steering wheel. I, I guess it came out of Europe or something because I haven't seen one of these before and uh, it's cool. Brake pedal is nice and tight. These 928s are, are beautiful GT cars. They're comfortable, they make a good sound, they ride very well. 
uh, for their size and weight, they handle well. All right, come on, let's go to second here. I ran my sighting laps in a uh, Chevy Equinox rental car, so forgive me if I have to re relearn where some of these corners go. So it's really second and third, but I have to manually shift between second and third because it really doesn't want to kick down to second. Where am I? Where am I? Oh yeah, it goes left. Sorry. <laughs> it goes left here. Braking down to second drags a bit. I like the weight of the steering. It's really got a good immediate torque when you get into the pedal. The accelerator pedal is a little heavy. Oops. There's that blow-off sound I like. What is that? Uh, what's that hissing sound? It's Whatever I say, it's all, it always ends up being wrong. It's like uh, uh, waste gain, is it? Blow, uh, it's not blow by. I'm blanking on whatever that sound is. Someone's going to correct me of what the actual name of the sound is. Very bumpy track, but the 928 is dealing with it pretty well. How do I make this cold? Cold, it's hot. It's very hot. What do I do? It's blowing super hot air on me. All right, let's, now that I'm ready, let's, uh, let's open up for our first real lap. here in the front straight. I'm going to be real conservative with the brakes here on this 928 because I want to be sure that I can make it through 10 or 15 minutes of driving. The power is really nice. Went out of revs. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was I saying about running out of brakes? Uh, that may have come a little quicker than I expected. Oh man, the top half of the power band is glorious. <laughs> Leaving it in second is really, really helping me stay in that power band. This is a four speed auto, so it's got, you know, long legs. power. All right, I'm going to have to really do some brake management. The pedal went from very tight to kind of soft in a matter of like seconds. It's good, got good balance actually. When it starts to get a little squirrely, it's very easy to correct. Whee! Bumpy racetrack. Oh, this is fun though. 928 supercharged. How cool. The steering has a good good weight to it. And like this car was really heavy by 80s standards, but by today's standards it actually feels almost live. Almost almost light. The engine feels the gearbox is lazy, but the engine itself is pretty lively. tires. Here's the one wet spot of the track. Hasn't dried yet there. Everywhere else seems to be pretty good. Eagles Canyon Raceway. Bumpy, but very fun. It's super weird to be driving old school automatics on the track. I have a really hard time managing the gear changes with these old school automatic boxes. The manuals are just a lot easier to manage. Hee <laughs> hee! 
<laughs> oh, I skipped the gear there. But am I in gear? It did a weird thing when I hit red line in second. I'm not really sure. Oh, we're back. It's back. It like upshifted, but then it it just kind of got angry. I, I think maybe you don't want to actually hit the red line in this car. Wow, between four and six grand, it really pulls good. But with the automatic, it's kind of tough to keep it between four and six grand unless you're just really leaving it too. I mean, it looks like second gear is good for at least 65 miles an hour here. This thing has 220k on it. It feels really tight. I mean, there's a couple little rattles because there's some interior bits missing, but considering the, the bumpy nature of this track, the age and mileage of this car, Porsches, I mean, it's not just the 911. Porsches hold up really, really well. And uh, temps at the track today are perfect. It's in the middle 40s right now. So really good for the forced induction engines. The, uh, the temp on the car is right where it's supposed to be. All of our gauges look good. I think I apex a little early there. <laughs> what a neat car, okay. I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, but you could actually build a 928 into a pretty, pretty legit track toy. Uh, I've seen a couple 928 race cars in the past that were really, really cool. And I think, wow, with the right amount of uh, brake and tire, and of course, you know, a manual gearbox of some kind, you could actually have a pretty cool, pretty cool little road course vehicle. I mean, it's, it's got really good front rear balance. I thought I would have fully cooked the brakes and possibly cooked the engine after this many laps in this car. You see what happens? I went down to second gear there and as the rear end like kind of caught, it, it stepped the back out a bit. car is up for is up for lapping to a degree that I did not expect at all. Um, really, really kind of impressive. Wow, it's actually got some some stick to it there too. Ah, what a neat car! And I may have to get one of these steering wheels for my 911. This steering wheel is really choice. It's got a nice, thick, grippy, or uh, it's got a really nice shape to it. Okay, I'll cool her down in the back half of this track. So listen, this is a really comfortable, spacious GT car, right? These 928s, I would, I could sit in this and, and literally drive across the country and in total comfort, uh, and I would not have expected that uh, this car would be remotely capable on a racetrack. I would have thought that it was be kind of a mess, but in actuality, it has really nice front rear balance. It has really good steering feel. Um, you know, the brakes did get a little bit soft. With that Rotrek supercharger, I mean, it's got a lot of power. I can, I can really imagine how, how this, uh, how this car would feel if you had access to a manual transmission and you could keep it in that power band uh, more of the time. Not to mention, you know, having more gears to work with uh, just in general. Uh, you know, you've only got four speeds here, uh, and you would have that extra gear. Or right, could, you, could you get a six-speed in this? I don't know if you could ever get a six-speed in this, but uh, at least one more gear, maybe two. Um, but what a neat car. Uh, I, I would not have ever thought about supercharging a Porsche 928, but it really does make the, uh, the power come on 
progressive and linear. Uh, the temps seem to be able to hold up to at least 10 minutes of, uh, of pretty rigorous lapping. I mean, granted, I wasn't going out there trying to win Le Mans in this thing, but, um, you know, it, it can handle temperatures. It can handle loads. It's, uh, it seems to be a, <laughs> a well-sorted vehicle after 220,000 miles. Wow. So uh, thank you to Sean for letting me have a go. Thank you to, uh, to all these guys for putting this together. And uh, check out EaglesCreekRaceway.com if you're interested in uh, track days or track membership programs in the Dallas metro area. Uh, I'm going to go back in the pits right now and grab another car. And uh, we're going to see what else these guys brought. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Later.